Okay, let's talk about the brand new Simple Sci-Fi Flex V2 product. And I should mention first, the GeoTab is something that you've already seen and we've covered in previous videos. I'll put a link to those videos in the description because what I want to really talk about is this text one and this display one. And in particular, the displacement one is the one that we want to focus on today. As you recall, one of the initiatives for the creation of this product was to replace a tool called JS Placement, which is no longer being distributed. And the actual author set very limiting terms and conditions on how you can use the product. Now, in this product, after you buy it, anything you create with this using our DPACs, you're free to distribute any of those, whether they're atlases or trim sheets or just displacement maps, whatever, you're free to use those and sell them and use them on commercial products and do whatever you want with them. It's really pretty straightforward. You have these D-packs, which are listed right here. And we'll start with the K's one first. And then you have different generators. You can choose grid and shapes. And I'm going to explain those here in just a little bit. But the D-packs are basically just collections, right? They're, so if I just go in here and I say, load D-pack to scene. And keep in mind that if I just click right now, apply generator map, it'll automatically, if it doesn't see this D-pack, it'll apply whatever's up here to the scene. So I can just hit that right now. But first, Let's just go ahead and load this to the scene and notice that here, are, here they are right here. And let's just go ahead and turn them on. So when you look at these, you'll see that each one of these has a kind of a grayscale gradient on this particular D-pack. Each D-pack can have its own materials associated with it. So when we start looking at some of these objects, like the top one and the bottom, let's grab this here. So you'll look here, let's turn off the face orientation. You'll see that each one of these has different kinds of objects. There's two different collections, a top one and a bottom one. The top one is really for proportional sensitive objects, meaning that we have, you know, things like this. If you were to stretch this out, it doesn't really look right. Whereas the bottom one has non-proportional. That's what the NP stands for, non-proportional sensitive. If you stretch these out, it's not going to really matter, right? So that's what these are. And I'm going to go ahead and hide these again because they're not ne that necessary. I'll hit zero to reset the camera. So let's go ahead and create a displacement map. So we've loaded this case d -pack. And these are just, as we mentioned, these are collections with just objects in them, right? So they're just objects. You can add and delete these objects. It doesn't matter if you delete them because this K's collection is pulled from your add-ons folder. It comes with Simple Sci-Fi Flex too. So it'll actually, anything you save here will not be propagated back to this. So delete them. You can add stuff to it if you want. However you want to do that, just that just works fine. So we're going to use this one and we're going to use this shapes. And remember that these collections now use these geometry nodes. You can you have two different ones here, shapes and grid. These geometry nodes will use these D-packs to populate what we see here. So let's go ahead and just hit this apply generator map. So we've done that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my modifiers and I'm going to basically create a, black, a background black. I can make it black, white, or gray. I'm going to just make it black. So there it is right there. So now that it's black, you can see that let's, we have the non-proportional density and the proportional density. So let's talk about that. So let's just go to the non-proportional first. And first, a seed basically just randomizes all this stuff. And keep in mind that in the non-proportional, we're scaling X and Y independently. So that way we get more ver variation, right? And then we can change the size of things as well. And we can change, of course, the density as well. So we can make it very limited or higher density in this particular shapes generator. And let's turn this off. And now we're going to go to the proportional ones. We'll just, let's add that. Now these have objects that as we change the size or we move the seed number, they don't change their proportions. They all stay the same, right? Most of them have a circle in them or a 45 degree angle or something that basically is part of the inherent design of them. So we can make that size a little bigger and make this density a little larger. So like this, and then let's add this density here, something like this, and a little size, so we get something. And that could be like a displacement map. And again, if maybe if we want that to be gray, we can. Well, let's talk a little bit about this rose. In this particular shapes geometry, if I, if I scroll over here, let's turn off my face orientation, but you'll see that we have three separate rows of things going on. So if I take it to one, I just have one row, right? So if I look at this from the top view, hit the zero key on the numpad to move the camera view. If I look at here, that's only one row. By adding multiple rows, I'm adding more detail. So that's what that does. And then of course, the material that you use is a function of actually the D-pack. And if there is a material in the D-pack with the same name as the D-pack, in this case, K's, it will use that. And if I use a different material, let's say 
let's scroll down and that's why cutter. So that's a different material and you can see that's not nearly as effective, right? So if we look at this, we'll go in here and we'll see that, yeah, that's, that's not working nearly as effective as the case was. But what it is, like for instance, these angles that we see on different surfaces, we're not going to see that variation. But if we go back to K's, we'll see that they're working much better now for these ramps. So here's a ramp. So the ramp start dark and goes light. So when the displacement map works, it's going to actually render that ramp because that's what that material does. So a lot of times I'll just turn this off so I can just see stuff like this. We'll go back to zero. So now that we've done this, the next thing we need to focus on is creating our displacement map. And so the way we do that is we're going to use either an 8K, 4K, 2K, or 1K. And we're defaulting to 2K. One thing that we do is we render in EV. We don't render in cycles because EV is a lot cleaner. It creates a much cleaner noise-free. And noise is something you don't want to have in a displacement map at all. So just keep that in mind. So once we've done that, we can just basically go ahead and say render scene. And it's going to go ahead and do that. And because it's EV, it renders it pretty fast. The other thing I want to mention is when we save this, right? So if we go image, save as, it defaults to open EXR, 16-bit or 32-bit. And for displacement maps, you really want something at least 16-bit because anything like a gradient that you render is going to be much smoother in a 16 or a 32-bit. And keep in mind, when you save as an open EXR, the file size is very small, many times smaller than a ping at 8-bit. But when you open it up inside of Blender, it expands and takes the full 32 bits. So it can be much larger. That's something to keep in mind. And it's why I always say when you're creating displacement maps, always use this half or full OpenEXR format. But when you're creating diffuse maps like dot maps or any kind of color maps, then use the 8-bit ping. It's just fine for that. And then you save this out. Okay. So now I'll talk about one more thing. Let's go ahead and I'm going to shift A. I'm going to add a sphere. Move it down and let's move it up so it's on top, top of everything. And let's smooth it. Right now, if we look at the rendering view, we'll see that's black because there is no lighting. Because when we render this, all these are emissive objects. So they render correctly. But th this being white, in fact, let's go ahead and, and let's go back here and let's make this new. We're going to make it just something red so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we go into here, you see it's black because there's no emissive quality to it. But if we want to render it with that color, we can say toggle scene lighting and we go over here and that works correctly. So that's what this button does that allow you to actually see the colors in the objects as well as the emissive colors too. So this toggle scene lighting turns on and off. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that. Let's turn these back on. We're going to reset the scene. So that's this button right here, and it basically gets rid of everything. So we don't have collections or objects. We're back to square one. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to look at some of these others. The DAX one, very similar to some of the different JS placement generators. This doesn't have any ramps at all. So if you look at it, we'll zoom in here. You'll see that there's no ramps here. Let's go back into this view right here. There are no ramps in here. There's just all flat colors, and they're different surfaces. And they also have... NP, NP stuff. Okay, so let's talk about some of the others. We have this uh, hieroglyphics one right here. And I'm going to also use the grid because hieroglyphics are typically, you think of these as on a grid of some kind. So that's why we're going to use that. Let's apply the generator to the map. They're here, actually. They're just on the four corners. So if we look at this, we'll see that we have our subdivide set to zero. So let's just start adding more subdivisions. And let's add the material, the background material to black. And this material, we can set it to gray or something like that. Doesn't matter. But now, if I use the K's material, they're going to be different. You can see they're different. And if I turn off the rotate, that means that they won't rotate at all. And then I can just start adding the subdivisions right here. And they'll start adding more. They just have different sizes that you can adjust here. The MPs are like lines, little details. So they're always going to be a little smaller. And the P's are objects, right? And you can just start, you can use this to scale them around, find something that you may like. The density doesn't do a lot. It'll do a little bit, but you can use it to also as a seed if you want. So it works like that. So that might be our hieroglyphics one right here. Let's just, you know, make the size a little bigger, 2K. Let's just turn on this. So you can see, we don't really want the scene lighting on in this one. So we just render the scene, take a look what we got. And you can see this is what we have. So and this is our hieroglyphics that we have some more on, like I said, it's more about a, a grid setting. I'll uh, zoom in. You can see how these things work. 
And I, I can always say reset camera and it'll bring it back to here and I can reset the scene again. It's going to get rid of everything. We're back to the beginning. And let's look at the last one, which is Carice. And we'll go to shapes and we'll apply the generator map. And Carice is very similar to Dax. It's got a lot of flat shaded stuff. So let's just go ahead and give it a, a black background and we'll just zoom this down and zoom this down so you can start to see, you can see how that works. You can turn the rotate on and off in this as well in this shapes generator, by the way, a little more complex than Dax is. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about some other things here that you might want to be aware of when it comes to Flex B2. So first off, understand that when you're in the disc mode and in the text mode, either one of these, and by the way, let's just go over text real quick. Text is just about creating dots and it's really easy to do. We're going to, we're going to show you that in just a second. But if you're in this mode, you're either one of these, you're in this other scene file called SSF map right here. There's the regular scene that we're in, and here's SSF map. And sometimes you want to move things between one another. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's just go back. You can click on Geo and it'll take you right back here. And so let's delete this. And I'm going to go to Kit Ops, and I'm going to add this sci-fi character right here. I'm going to add that insert here, and I'm going to rotate him. I'm going to control A, apply the rotation. Okay. And so now with him here, can say control L, or I can go into object, link transfer data, link object to scene and put them over here, right? So now if we go back to this scene over here and you'll see there he is. And so with that done, let's just go ahead and scale him down this, move him up, move him over. So I'm gonna, what I wanna do is I'm trying to make a wall, right? So here, put this character, this kind of space character, and then let's just give him, let's go into here and let's take this, uh, this is the K's, object in this shift control and grab this one last control L, or we can use the link command control L and just say link materials. So I do that. And now we have this set. So now we want to actually release this one also delete that one. There we go. Okay. So now I can basically adjust this in here. So I'll go into the case and I'll duplicate this. So we have a new one for this guy. And then I'm going to bypass this so i don't have this i don't want to have the random this is a randomization thing right and i can adjust this right so as i adjust this you'll see that it goes all the way down now why is it starting at this black point right here well that's because it starts at object origin again let's click on our object and we'll go under options and we'll say origins and let's just move it down as, as i move it down you can see it goes like that okay and then let's turn that off and then let's go back over here and adjust this a little bit more and you can see we're like that. And then if I go to the top view, we're like this. And now when I create a displacement map, I'll get something that I can use as this is going to be embedded in here. In fact, I might even just take this and make this instead of black, I might make it gray. So, you know, so he's embedded in there and we're all embedded in there. 2K, we'll do a 4K render scene. And that's a displacement map. And let's save that. I'll save again. We're going to use the open EXR. Untitled EXR, I'm going to save it right there. Okay. And we'll close this. Okay. Now that we have that map generated, I created a new scene file. Shift A to add a plane in here. And there it is. And I'm going to add a material. I'm going to call this displace. Let's move it up. Okay. And what I'll do is I'm going to use Node Wrangler and I'm going to add, I don't need these. It's going to be UV mapped. I'm going to add the image, right? So I'm going to open up the image that we saved. There it is. Let's go ahead and we're going to set this up for displacement. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a modifier. I'm going to generate a subdivision modifier and I'm going to set it to simple and adaptive. Then I'm going to go into my render settings. It's important to make sure you are using cycles in experimental mode in order for adaptive subdivision to work. So you scroll down. I'm going to set my subdivision from one this is the viewport. I'm going to set the same as the render. So I'll just set one, right? One, one, because I'm on fast computer. You might use it, set it for less, but for a fast computer, that's what I'm going to set it at. Okay. So we have that. I'm going to delete this right here and shift a, and I'm going to add a displacement, put the color into the height right here. Now, because this is an EXR, I don't need to say non-data. I can just leave it linear. I think, I, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. If someone knows differently, let me know. But now that we go to cycles, it's still pretty flat. So we don't see it being displaced. And that's because we need to go into the material setting 
and this is bizarre, under displacement, don't worry about that. That's not what we need. We need to look under settings. And under settings, we want to bump and displacement. So we'll put both of those in. And then now you see that we do have displacement. So now let's go in here and let's set this to something like 0.1. And let's set the color to something like gray or something like that. You can see what's going on. And there we have it. Now, as I zoom in here, because we're on adaptive subdivision, we're going to get more and more. But as you can tell, it's not that great. We might want to have more. And part of the reason is because we're at 4K. And I probably, if I was going to do this, I want to use an 8K for something as complex as this. But the other issue is you can see these faces in here, these faces right here. We should have subdivided that character first, that, that subdivision surface on it, so, because this smoothing, it doesn't do anything here. Actually, let's just turn off uh, adaptive subdivision for a second. And let's just go on to three, four, five. So you can start to see the actual level that we're at, six, seven. And even at this super high level, you're starting to see that. Now, I couldn't, if I'm going to tab into this, actually, let's go back to one. And I'm going to tab into this and say, right click, subdivide, and let's give it 100, tab back out, and then turn off the wireframe. And now, so now we have, you can see we're really cracking up the subdivision quite a bit here. And even so, Q wireframe, I did this so you can see how dense that mesh is that we're subdividing. You can see we're still not getting that smoothing because it's capturing all of that data when we did the original displacement map. So I would have probably, in fact, I did on this rendering here, I captured 8K and I smoothed the object, right? So turn that wireframe off. But now you can, but you can see the rest of the stuff is working out pretty well too. So you can do some kind of interesting things by adding a color ramp here into the base color. So you can get some interesting things going on here. And typically you might even say, use a constant and then you can just grab the different parts. They might want to do this here in uh, EV mode because you'll be able to tell what's going on. So there, something like that, you could add another color. Let's make a red color so you can do stuff like this. Go back in here and you'll see that what happens. So if you, yeah, if you use these, this constant mode, you can create some interesting things. Let's take this, let's make it gray and let's go into metallic and just check that up so we can see it's a little more metal. So you can get the idea and just adjust, adjust these things a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to create some trim sheets and I've created some materials that you can use that helps even more that are already set up for you quite nicely about the text tab for dots. All you do is just say apply generator map, right? So this is going to give us our dots. Then we'll come over here and let's make the background and then we'll just adjust the density to zero to each one of these and the size to maybe half and then just start playing with it right so there's a little bit so there you can see that the size is way too big move that down and then we can go to this next one here and add the density to that one and again the size is too big so you get the idea and there's a couple of different ones you can use this one if you want apply your map so that'll that gives you a different one. And let's do the background is black. Again, there you go. So each one has some different settings, right? So you get the idea. And then you just render and export it. So it's for emissive light maps is what that's for. I hope this was helpful to you. And hopefully you'll enjoy using Simple Sci-Fi Flex V2. And stay tuned for the trim sheet tutorials that will be coming up next. Thanks for watching. Bye.